In our last video, we covered with the CPU, and even though the CPU is smart, it needs a way to quickly access its thoughts and tasks. Well, that's where memory comes in. So today, we're going to be breaking down RAM, your computer's short-term memory. We'll cover what it is, how it works with the CPU, and what specs actually matter. Let's get started. So what is RAM? Well, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. The random access part is key. It means your computer's CPU can access any piece of data stored in it, in any order, almost instantly. This is the opposite of sequential memory, like an old tape, where you'd have to fast forward to get to the data that you need. RAM is a type of volatile memory, meaning it only holds data temporarily while your computer is powered on. Think of it like your personal workspace or your desk. The larger it is, the more tools and projects you can keep open and ready. Every time you open a program, load a browser, or edit a file, that data is temporarily moved into RAM for quick access. Why? Well, because pulling data from your main storage drive is thousands of times slower. Accessing RAM takes nanoseconds, while accessing an SSD takes microseconds. But once you turn that system off, that data disappears, just like clearing your desk at the end of the day. So now that we know what RAM is, how does it actually work on a technical level? How does that desk hold your information? Inside each RAM module are billions of memory cells. These are tiny transistors and capacitors that hold binary data, ones and zeros. Your CPU, via its memory controller, is in constant communication with your RAM. It reads and writes data back and forth across a pathway called a memory bus. That's the core concept, but when you actually go to buy RAM, you'll immediately notice different types. Not all RAM is created equal. When you go to buy memory, the first thing you'll notice is an acronym, DDR, which stands for Double Data Rate. This means the memory can send or receive data twice per clock cycle once on the rising edge and once on the falling edge of a signal. In short, it's a clever way to double performance without doubling the clock speed. Over the years, DDR has evolved through multiple generations. DDR or DDR1, the original double data rate memory, this is now completely obsolete. Then you had DDR2, which introduced faster speeds and better efficiency. Then we moved on to DDR3, which became the standard through most of the 2010s which is faster and more power efficient than DDR2. DDR4 improved again with higher speeds and lower voltages, still common in mid-range and some older systems today. And now the current standard DDR5, which offers much higher bandwidth on module power management and greater efficiency. Each generation increases speed, measured in megahertz or mega transfers, and bandwidth, or how much data can move at once, while reducing power consumption. But they're not cross-compatible. Each generation has a different notch position and voltage, so a DDR5 module physically won't fit into a DDR4 slot. Most modern computers today use either DDR4 or DDR5. Always check your motherboard's manual to confirm exactly what type and speed it supports. On desktop PCs, you'll find the standard full-size sticks called DIMMs, short for Dual Inline Memory Modules. These are long, rectangular sticks you slot into your motherboard. On laptops, you'll usually see a smaller version called SoDIM, which means Small Outline DIM. It's the same technology, just compacted to fit in tighter spaces. Now, newer laptops, especially ultra-thin designs and mobile workstations, are starting to adopt an even more advanced memory format, CAM2 and LP CAM2. CAM2, short for Compression Attached Memory Module, is a new form factor originally developed by Dell and then standardized by JDEC. Instead of plugging vertically into a slot, a CAM2 module is pressed flat against the motherboard using a compression connector. This design allows for thinner laptop designs, better thermal efficiency, and higher memory speeds. Now before we move to LP Cam 2, it helps to understand what LP DDR5 actually is. LP DDR5 stands for Low Power Double Data Rate 5 Memory. It's designed primarily for mobile devices like smartphones and tablets, where energy efficiency is critical. Compared to standard DDR5, LP DDR5 uses less voltage, has smaller traces, and is often soldered directly to the motherboard. It delivers impressive bandwidth with much lower power draw, perfect for battery powered devices. LP CAM2, or Low Power Compression Attached Memory Module, takes that same LP DDR5 technology and puts it into a replaceable module instead of a soldered down one. This means you can finally get the speed and efficiency of LP DDR memory and the upgradability of traditional RAM. These new standards, CAM2 and LP CAM2, are a big step forward because they combine performance, efficiency, and serviceability in modern laptop designs. So once you've confirmed what kind of RAM you'll need, you'll see two other big numbers on the box that you have to decide on, capacity and speed. This is the size of your workbench. If you run out of space, your computer is forced to swap data back to your slow storage drive in a temporary file. This is what causes stuttering and slowdowns when you have too much open. 
So then you have to ask yourself, how much do you need? Well, eight gigabytes is the bare minimum for light browsing. 16 gigabytes is kind of that sweet spot for most users, perfect for gaming, productivity, and multitasking. 32 gigabytes, the new standard for heavy content creators, 4K video editors, and serious multitaskers, and then 64 gigs or more. This is for professional 3D rendering or complex scientific computing. And then there's speed or frequency, like 3200 megahertz or 5600 megatransfers. This affects how fast your CPU can access data. Higher speeds mean faster data transfer. While faster RAM can help performance, especially in gaming, it's not magic. It's about headroom, not horsepower. More RAM doesn't make your CPU faster. It just lets it work at its full potential without waiting. But getting the right capacity and speed is only half the battle. How you install that RAM is just as critical. And that brings us to channel configuration. This is something that is often overlooked. Think of your memory bus as a road. A single stick of RAM, single channel, is like a one lane road. It works, but traffic can back up. Most modern motherboards support dual channel memory by installing two matching sticks of RAM. You open up a second lane. This lets the CPU access both sticks simultaneously, effectively doubling the bandwidth. This is why two 8GB sticks will always significantly outperform one 16GB stick. The CPU isn't waiting for data as long. Even some high-end systems support quad channel, but for 99% of users, dual channel is the goal. All right, so we've got capacity, speed, and dual channel locked in. If you really wanna get into the weeds and fine tune your performance, then there's one more detail to look at, latency. Another key detail is the delay before your RAM can respond to a request from the CPU. You've probably seen numbers like CL16 or CL36. That's what's called CAS latency or column address strobe. It measures the number of clock cycles it takes from the RAM to return a piece of data. Lower numbers mean faster response. It's a balancing act. Often, extremely high-speed RAM like DDR5 will have a higher CL number than slower RAM like DDR4. But because its clock cycles are so much faster, the true latency, measured in nanoseconds, is still incredibly slow. In real-world use, the difference is small. But for enthusiasts, finding that sweet spot of high frequency and low latency is key to maximum performance. So to bring it all together, RAM is your computer's short-term memory and workspace. It bridges the gap between the lightning-fast CPU and the slower long-term storage. Its size, speed, and configuration all play a role into how smooth your experience feels. It's about balance, enough space for your system to think clearly without tripping over itself. Next time you open a dozen browser tabs or run a few programs at once, just remember, all that chaos, RAM is what keeps it all together. Now you should understand why RAM is such a vital component in every system. And I'm curious, let me know down in the comments how much RAM is in your system. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel so that way you don't miss the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, keep growing.